I have a really fun quilt for you guys this week. It is a double pinwheel quilt made from this awesome Ruby Star Society Clementine fabric. It screams summer and it really scratched my itch of using a non-white or neutral background fabric in a quilt. The quilt is rather large. It is 67 by 83. So this is a really good size quilt. So if you're looking for something a little bit bigger, then this is the quilt for you. The free pattern is in the description below with all of the cutting instructions, yardage, some basic assembly diagrams, all to help you as you watch the video and make your own version. So grab a fat quarter bundle and let's get cutting. Our fat quarter A pile will be cut into four squares. Two of the squares will be these eight inch half square triangle blocks. So you'll be cutting two squares and then cutting them on the diagonal. You can do this one at a time or stack them like I did here. The eight and a quarter inch squares will be cut on both diagonals to create eight quarter square triangles. Now this is enough quarter square triangles to create two of our eventual blocks whereas the half square triangles we just cut out of the eight inch squares are enough for just one block. Our pile B of fat quarters contains just five fat quarters, and these will be cut slightly different from the, from the pile A. We won't be cutting any of the quarter square triangles from the pile B fat quarters, so you're gonna cut four eight inch squares and cut each of these on the diagonal just once. And again, the cutting schematics for both of these sets of fat quarters are in the free downloadable pattern, and the link to that is in the description for the video just below. So I have finished cutting all of my fabric and all of my background, and it's time to make a block. So each block requires one set of four of the large half square triangles, one set of four of the smaller quarter square triangles that we cut from the 8.25 inch squares, and then one set of four uh, quarter square triangles cut from our background yardage. And be sure to take a look at the diagram when you lay this out because you wanna make sure that it looks like this and not like this or your blocks won't um, come together in exactly the same way. So I have all four of each of my pieces stacked here and we are going to chain piece all four of the kind of sub units for each block at the same time because they're all exactly the same. So the first step is to grab a pair of your smaller triangles right sides together and we are going to stitch this side together this seam right here and i'm just going to use a quarter of an inch seam and like just about all piecing with these little skinny triangles at the tip if you have the kind of machine that likes to suck those down inside and if you have one you totally know what i'm talking about then grab a small scrap piece of fabric and just send it through your machine first and it will just kind of give your machine a little something to um, hold on to so that you can send that little skinny triangle through your machine now I am just making one block at a time here uh, for the video, but when I am ready to make all of the other blocks for this quilt, I will have all of the blocks stacked up just like this on my little mat here, and I will do this same step. Let's see, there's 20 blocks times four. I will do this 80 times, and I will chain all of these little quarter square triangles together with the background piece and do it all at once. If you would prefer to work block by block, then um, do what makes you feel comfortable. If you find that your triangles are not lining up absolutely precisely, the kind of right angle here is the more important part to get to line up. And you can see mine are just a tad off, just like a 16th of an inch off. The more important part will be this, this right angle here. Now pressing direction as always is up to you. There will be some intersecting seams in the corners when we attach all of these blocks together. So I'm gonna press mine open just to reduce that bulk in the future final assembly step. 
So now that I have my two quarter square triangles seamed together, it's time to attach this unit to my original large triangle that was cut from the big square. And this is just like making a half square triangle unit from triangles. So we just place these units right sides together and make sure that this line is nice and straight. And if you need to just kind of gently push things so that it's nice and straight, then do that. I'm not gonna bother to pin this, but if it makes you feel comfortable, you certainly can. We are just gonna sew this long diagonal with a quarter inch seam. Now I'm gonna repeat that seam with the other three kind of parts of this block, and then we'll be ready to make our final block. Now that I have all four of my block units done and pressed nicely, I'm going to pause now and trim them down to seven and a half inches square. And that will just make my final block come together really easily and simply. I'm gonna grab my seven and a half inch square ruler and just whip around these subunits. Now my blocks are all trimmed perfectly square and they are gonna fit together perfectly into that final block. So I've got my block all laid out and it's just sewing it together like any four patch. I'm gonna sew this seam, then this seam, and then this long seam all the way across. And again, I'm not pinning, but if you like to pin, then pin away, my friend. Okay, time for the final seam. And I am just gonna stick a pin right in the center here just to make sure that that part of the block comes together perfectly. And then I guess I might as well stick a pin in the end while I'm right here. But you can see trimming those units, the subunits, means that this is matching up perfectly. And my block is done. It came out really lovely. Point in the center, perfect. And I have the exact quarter of an inch all the way around so that when I join these blocks together, I will preserve all these little points around the edge. So I'm super happy with that. Tips for sewing these little bias triangles together, just take your time, use a little bit of starch, and um, let your machine do the work. Don't pull on it or drag it. Just let those feed dogs pull that fabric through your machine. And I'm sure that your points will come out perfect. So I'm gonna go sew together all these other blocks and when we meet back, we will be ready to assemble our final quilt top. We're back and I have completed all of my double pinwheel blocks and I started to lay them out and realized that they needed a little bit of room to breathe. And so I've decided to sash all of the blocks as you can see. Sashing your blocks is a little bit like adding a little border to each individual block. It just gives it a little bit of separation from the blocks around it and gives you another area to maybe do a little bit of fun quilting or just uh, to highlight more of your background color. I have been trying really hard to move away from using white or gray or black, like these standard background colors, to experiment more with some more fun colors. And um, adding all of the sashing in this great cone of purple kind of gives a little bit more heft to using that background color. So you can add sashing to any quilt that is block based. All you need to do is when you're assembling your quilt, you need to add little upright sections, little rectangles of your background fabric between your blocks as you assemble your rows. And then between your rows, you just need to add a long strip. The upright rectangles are the height of your block, the raw height of your block. My blocks are 13 and a half inches tall right now when they're not sewn to anything else. So I cut strips that were 13 and a half inches high and as wide as I wanted my sashing. I chose to go with three and a half inches because I wanted kind of a chunky sashing. You could add as little as an inch between blocks or you could add a nice chunky four or five inch sashing if that's the look that you're going for. I wanted something that was kind of in between so I cut my strips three and a half inches. I have already assembled most of this last row of my quilt and I have this final block of the row still unattached and I need to just insert my sashing here and then attach this final block. So all I'm gonna do is place this sashing strip right sides together with my row and 
because all of the seams are on this side, all of the seam allowances, I'm gonna flip this over and sew from this side. So that nice flat sashing can be against the bed of my machine and I can see all of these little seam allowances. So I can hit those points exactly how I want them and make sure my seam allowances stay where I want them to be. As always, just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now you don't have to use pins for this. This is kind of one of those gray area lengths for me where if it's a really short seam, I usually don't use pins, but right around 12 inches or so, I really feel like I like to use pins. So I'm just gonna stick a couple of pins into this seam. And I take a, a moment to add a pin to make sure that this seam allowance because I've pressed my seam allowances open, I wanna make sure that they stay open. So I'm just gonna stick a pin to kind of flatten that seam allowance so that when it goes through my machine, it, it does stay open. Now that I have my piece of sashing attached to my row, I can flip it out and attach my last block of the row right to my sashing. Now I'm gonna wait to press all of my sashing seams at once just to save a little bit of time. Because I'm not kind of sewing against them or intersecting them in any way, they can wait. They're all parallel seams, so I can press them all at the end. My sashing rectangle is all inserted into my row, and now I'm gonna press these seams. Now if you take a look at the back, you'll see that the bulk of the blocks is all on one side. The sashing seam is just a rectangle of fabric. So I'm gonna press all of my seams towards the sashing rectangle, just to cut down on bulk and make my cold top lay a little bit flatter. Now that we have our rows all done, it is time to assemble our rows and our sashing rows into the quilt top that you see. You're gonna alternate a row of blocks with a row of sashing and repeat until you get to the last row. To cut your sashing, you are going to measure the length of your rows, which for this pattern is 61 inches. And then from your big long bundle of sashing strips, you're gonna cut 61 inch long strips and just insert them like you would another row of blocks. So you're gonna start with a, block, a row of blocks, sashing, block, sashing, and end with a row of blocks. And then you will have a bundle of sashing left over that is enough to do a border all the way around the quilt. And that is done exactly like these rows of sashing. You are gonna cut two that are 61 inches for the top and bottom. And then you are gonna cut the side border pieces, which I can't remember exactly how long they are right now, but it is in the pattern. So be sure to get the pattern. It is in the description below and it will tell you how long to make those side strips. You cut them, attach them, just as you do a sashing piece or the top or bottom border. So I am going to attach this last row to my quilt cool top, and then I will do the borders all the way around, and then we'll be done. a lot of very long seams to sew, but it's done and I couldn't be happier. This turned out to be a gigantic quilt. It is 67 by 83 from just 15 fat quarters and some background fabric. So that is a really good size quilt and it came together um, relatively quickly, even with all these little bias blocks to sew. The free pattern for this is in the description below. You might need to click on something that says read more or see more or something to kind of pop out the long description for the video. And be sure to subscribe. It is totally 100% free and um, you'll get notified of my new videos in your subscription feed and it will help um, grow my channel and help me produce more free cool patterns. I will have a new video for you guys next week, but in the meantime, there are two videos popping up on the screen. One is another full quilt tutorial, and the other one is a video that YouTube thinks that you will love. So I will see you soon, and happy quilting. I love the angle of me trying to turn this, this camera on. This is great.